Welcome to our TV program, Ithaca DSA Presents. I'm Wales Brown. Today we have with us a Maria Svart, who is the National Director of the DSA, of the Democratic Socialists of America. She's been in Ithaca to give a presentation called What is Democratic Socialism? So, how would you define that? What is democratic socialism? <laughs> so, uh, it is the opposite of the system we live in now. So today, uh, the very wealthy control um, who makes decisions about the allocation of resources. Um, so we have a political system where one dollar equals one vote, essentially, instead of one person equaling one vote. Um, and through the political system, they structure the economy, uh, so it's rigged to benefit the billionaire class, as Bernie Sanders would say, uh, rather than everyone else. So democratic socialism would be the opposite. It would be a system where uh, who decides on the allocation of resources is everyone, and you have democratic decision-making, not only a more perfect political democracy, because it's certainly not perfect now, but also a democratic economic system. So that could happen uh, at the point of the workplace where people would have stronger unions uh, or even you know, all of the workers owning their own um, firm and running the firm democratically and sharing in the wealth that they create equally and deciding how to allocate it. Um, it should definitely happen at the level of society even in terms of the allocation of resources um, you know, what do we invest public money in? Do we invest it in dirty, polluting um, resources, or do we invest it in things like solar, uh, which would benefit all of society in the long run by not killing the planet? Um, so it's a really this idea of deepening democracy, uh, making sure that people have a voice in the institutions which shape their lives, um, rather than the kind of system we have now. And I would add that as a socialist feminist, it's also important to recognize that there is labor that is uh, performed in our society, which is unpaid. Um, and that also needs to fit into the equation of democratic socialism. Um, we need to find ways to um, even out the gender division of labor um, and also racial segregation and um, the racialized division of labor. So it really is about making sure that our society works for all of us um, and we have communities where people can thrive, uh, rather than uh, a system where everybody, or 99% mm -hmm. of the people are struggling to get by um, because the 1% has set up all these institutions to siphon off the wealth created by the 99%. Okay, so socialism is partly about how people ought to run the government and partly about how people ought to run the business part of society, the, uh, uh, that does the work, is it more one or more the other? Is it about who owns things, or is it about who who channels and controls things? But well, I don't think you could necessarily say it's about more than one or the other. I mean, there could be an emphasis on either one. The thing about democratic socialism is, unlike some people on the left, we don't feel that we have, you know, a blueprint mm -hmm. that we just need to carry out, um, and then we'll have a perfect society. Uh, we actually believe that it needs to be created democratically, um, and exactly what it looks like is something we can't truly predict. Uh, we have a lot of ideas, but mm -hmm. um, the process of getting there has to be democratic, and ultimately we're not going to have a static society um, where you know the division between the workplace versus uh, the mm -hmm. level of the government um, is necessarily exactly the way we envision it now. Um, okay. And I think that's a fundamental thing to understand about the politics that we have, and, and it shapes the way that we act in the world today and the kind of um, methods that we use to organize as socialists. Okay, thinking about other people through history that have used that same term, socialism or, or socialists, uh, some of them have said, oh, look at such and such a country, they already have socialism. Um, is there any place where democratic socialism has been tried, where we could go and look and see how it works? So what the right wing likes to do is mm -hmm. use uh, socialism as a bad word. 
mm-hmm. and equate it with communist countries, uh, which were highly undemocratic. Mm-hmm. Um, and in fact, not only did they suppress free speech, and people that have our politics were jailed in mm-hmm. many communist countries. Um, but not only do we believe profoundly in individual freedom, uh, we also believe that setting up an economy that is highly top-down mm-hmm. is not going to work, and it, it was proven not to work. It creates perverse incentives. So, um, you know, that's when people say, oh, where has it worked before? What they're trying to refer to is communist countries, which is not mm-hmm. the same vision that we have. Um, on the other hand, um, there are countries today that are further along towards a democratic oh. socialism that we can look to. Okay. Um, so what I'm referring to are, uh, especially some of the countries that people might be familiar with because of the Bernie Sanders campaign, Denmark, for example, and other Northern European countries are the, mm-hmm. the ones that most Americans are familiar with. Um, and they each actually structure their societies a little differently. Um, but they all, you know, they share a belief that there needs to be a basic baseline uh, level of public provision. And by mm-hmm. public provision, I mean public services, like how affordable housing, um, health care, things like that. So they believe that in order for society to thrive and for people to, to uh, you know, utilize their individuality and explore it and be productive um, in mm-hmm. society, they actually need to not be destitute. <laughs> um, so they have a very high tax rate, for example, and they'll use it to provide public services. Um, those are not democratic socialist countries, mm-hmm. but they are social democratic countries. Um, okay, and let's that, have that, that is a distinction, so, right. So that's a distinction. Um, and the, the simplest way to understand it is there are countries that are, um, they've taken capitalism and they've found ways to regulate it and um, they're more humane versions of capitalism. Hmm. Um, and they're not fully, they haven't fully democratized, you know, necessarily mm-hmm. the firms in the society and, and certainly, um, you know, the political system necessarily. So they're, they're kind of a modification. They're more humane than the United States. I think mm-hmm. Dem- Democratic Socialists in DSA believe that we would have a much better society in the U.S. if we were social democratic. Um, we supported the social democratic reforms that Bernie Sanders was uh, pushing for, like universal public higher education, Medicare for all, things like that. Um, but that's mm-hmm. not the same thing as taking control of Wall Street and running it democratically. And that's truly what it would mean to have a democratic social society, something where people truly had a voice in these major institutions that shape their lives. Okay, so Denmark is not there yet. No. Is it even traveling in that direction? Oh, well, it is, but the problem is it's being undermined by global capitalism. Oh. Um, and so it's not necessarily the model that we want to try to set mm-hmm. in stone and follow, um, mm-hmm. but it's the general idea that, that we want to... I mean, we need an, a uniquely American version, I, I would, I think, of democratic socialism or even social democracy. Um, but it would certainly allow us to continue making reforms hmm. in the right direction. Okay. Not to run down Denmark. I, I remember visiting a friend in Denmark, and just at that time we read a sad story in the newspaper about a foreign worker in Denmark who'd sent all his earnings home to his family in a, another much poorer country, and then starved to death because he didn't have anything to eat. Oh. And my friend said, there's no reason for anyone to starve in Denmark. Yep. And uh, you hear uh, that in the that United States, me. people yes. are starving yes. everywhere, yes. right? Yes. Yeah. Uh, so social democratic me- means providing goods and services to people uh, Regardless of what they're earning, can we say well, that? Well, right. It's it's using the political system to create a baseline, um, general level of support, and it's mm-hmm. like I said, it, it's done differently in different countries, um, but it's it's generally the idea that um, competitiveness between individuals and um, it is not the best mm-hmm. way to create a healthy society. So you'll have in um, some social democratic countries, you'll have paid family leave for both parents, and sometimes Mm -hmm. there is an incentive for fathers to take significant time off. Mm -hmm. That's a socialist feminist reform. Mm -hmm. Um, And you'll have universal health care, affordable housing, and things like that. Um, You know, some, I think it's Sweden, um, one of the social democratic countries has a very high rate of um, small business ownership because they actually 
have a safety net so people can take risks and invest in creative ideas that they have. Um, whereas in the United States, if you take that risk and you fail, which most small businesses mm -hmm. do, then you are screwed, mm. right? So it actually, you know, when we talk... Uh, in DSA about how democratic socialism is really about freedom. It's about mm -hmm. true freedom. Mm -hmm. um, what we mean is that, you know, you actually will have the potential, no matter mm -hmm. what body you are born into and what family mm -hmm. and what class you're born into, you will actually have the opportunity to thrive and you will be able to explore whether it's your, whether you're an artist, exploring your creativity, mm -hmm. whether you're the next Einstein, developing your mind because we have a quality education system. You know, it really is um, about the idea that we should not be rats in a cage, mm -hmm. struggling to survive, possibly starving in the streets, um, you know, and having no value unless we're producing profit for some capitalist, you know. So it's really about having an alternative value system um, and having a different way of ensuring freedom and a different definition of freedom. I was th thinking about that today when you were giving your presentation at Cornell. One of the things they teach at Cornell, and one of the things that is a popular field among students, is how to be an entrepreneur. Yes. <laughs> uh, now, some people go into entrepreneurship because they think they may get rich, but there may be other kinds of rewards that it brings to oh. being able to set up a company and mm -hmm. see, it, mm -hmm. uh, see it run. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So there would still be entrepreneurship under socialism. By Absolutely. I mean, I, I think we have to talk a little bit about entrepreneurship because mm -hmm. in the capitalist mm -hmm. system, it's a very risky venture. And yet mm -hmm. people today are really trained to think that, you know, it's possible. And we're really trained to idolize corporate leaders who mm -hmm. have gone all the way. And what we're not taught is that usually they come from a wealthy background and they're able to invest their family wealth in what they're doing, or they're extraordinarily mm. luckily, lucky. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I mean, this gets to another myth about capitalism, that people will only work if there's the threat of starvation. And the reality mm -hmm. is we know that the, concept, the idea of building something and running it and being able to be creative with it is actually a really strong motivator in, in humans. Um, and another really strong motivator is taking care of other people. Uh -huh. um, you know, a lot of, in our society, a lot of the work that women do is very devalued. Mm -hmm. So child care, health care, education. Um, but these are things that we dis, you know, because it's women's work, we don't put a lot of incentives into it in the capitalist system. Um, social work, these are all fields where we need people that do quality work. Um, a lot of people want to go into those fields because they mm -hmm. would feel a sense of personal satisfaction um, and yet it's, you know, you don't get paid enough, you're going to be burnt out, you know, mm -hmm. you're going to be heartbroken because in a capitalist system, a lot of people are left out. Um, so, you know, capitalism really skews the way, uh, the choices that people make in their lives. And the idea is, it goes back to this idea of unlocking personal freedom, mm -hmm. um, really allowing people to pursue what their interests are. And with many people, it is the creativity of being able to come up with something that will serve um, a, a particular need that some people have. Mm -hmm. um, but in the current system, you might do that and be bought up by some multinational corporation or they could snuff <laughs> you out through you know, unfair competitive advantage and that's just the reality of, of how capitalism works. And yet we're taught mm -hmm. that you know, true freedom comes through a capitalist system with zero government interference when the reality is the government shapes mm -hmm. everything to help uh, corporate power. Okay, so it's not between socialism and no governing. It's, be, it's between socialism and, and governing for the benefit of, of those that all, are already making a lot of money. Absolutely. I, you know, there's this, um, a really good way to think about it is this phrase that Bernie Sanders used all the time. Mm -hmm which is uh, that our elected leadership, Congress, does not regulate Wall Street. It's actually the other mm. way around. Wall oh. Street regulates Congress. Mm. And we are told that we need to, like, you know, government regulation is dragging us down, and you hear Donald Trump saying this all the time. But the reality is government regulation has to intervene to protect us uh -huh. because all these corporations want to make money. Mm -hmm. um, 
And uh, the reality is they shape government to make it difficult for consumers to protect themselves. They, make, mm-hmm. they, shape, they pass policy to rig the economy in their favor. And then they say that they're, they're basically being impartial. But the mm-hmm. reality is they're actually using government against the 99%. So if you think about the bank bailouts um, after the crash, mm-hmm. that was Wall Street basically gambling with our money. Um, they created a bubble. It crashed. Mm-hmm. Um, they were able to keep all the profits. Um, but then when they crashed, they came to the taxpayer and wanted to be bailed out. Um, but of course, if we talked about nationalizing them for, uh-huh. so that they could be run for the benefit of us all, um, with more regulation, you know, that wasn't even on the table because there isn't a strong socialist movement. So it could really is. A, could there be a national bank for everyone's benefit or a, a national investment company? Why not? Mm-hmm. I mean, these ideas are not on the table because Bernie Sanders... Mm-hmm. is the first one to put democratic socialist ideas back into political mainstream thought. Um, and they are eminently reasonable, mm-hmm. but if, if you don't control the media, if you don't control the education system, you know, how are we going to get these ideas out there if the best politician out there is saying, you know, um, you know students uh, shouldn't get access to high-quality affordable education they need to have some skin in the game <laughs> so, you know, like you really need someone that is creating a left-wing pole in the discourse to promote these ideas to point out how reasonable they truly are um you know it's whenever there's something that's like a natural monopoly that if mm-hmm. one corporation is going to control it um it, they things could really run amok and they could really hurt the mm-hmm. consumer you need to have government regulation and having a publicly run entity that is accountable, is transparent and is accountable to the public is very important. And of course, as democratic socialists, we don't just want government to run some of these really important resources mm-hmm. that we all need. We actually want them to be truly um, accountable to the grassroots uh-huh. um, because that's really the only way they're going to meet community needs. Mm-hmm. Um, but it is, you know, if the alternative is between some corporation that really is literally just there to make money Mm -hmm. versus something that is transparent. We're always going to go with the transparent (laughs) public um, entity. We've seen that with the pharmaceutical industry lately. uh, Some company takes over a medicine Mm -hmm. that's already been created by somebody else Mm -hmm. and jacks up the price on it. Yes. And in many cases, developed through public money. I mean, Mm -hmm. you know, we invest a lot in the development of pharmaceuticals and other technologies and then private corporations buy up the rights like uh, and and they they literally I mean, I Mm -hmm. I think they're literally killing people because they're jacking Mm -hmm. up the prices like the EpiPen Mm -hmm. thing that happened a few months ago. That's a perfect example. It's very cheap to manufacture Mm -hmm. and they jacked up the price and there was no excuse other than profits no excuse Um, so under capitalism it's not just workers Mm -hmm. that are working for a very low wage and their employers keeping you know all the profits that they've helped create but it's also the consumer that suffers in the system and yet Mm -hmm. we're told because we can get 25 different kinds of toothpaste that we have freedom (laughs) right you know but if we're dying and we need a certain medication it might cost $500 It's, it's a twisted system let me ask you about Bernie Sanders. You were mentioning him. Uh, he seems to be the first person to mention the word socialism uh, in political campaigning in quite a long time. But uh, what did he say that could be defined as socialist as opposed to uh, uh, social democratic left wing in general? Mm-hmm. So I really think it's important to point out that actually Bernie was not the only politician using the word socialism in a long time, but he's the only effective one (laughs) um, (laughs) because of the reality of the way our political system is set up. And I certainly don't think it's fair, but Mm -hmm. the reality is you have two major parties and they control the terms of the debate. So Bernie ran in the Democratic primary. He had a platform to speak to millions Mm -hmm. of people. Um, And really, he was talking about social democracy. You know, Mm -hmm. the ideas that he proposed were um, things that DSA would share as an immediate political Mm -hmm. program. He wasn't talking about truly democratizing the economy. Hmm. But we don't believe that we can jump over that step in the middle. Mm -hmm. Um, One of the things that we believe pretty profoundly, which differs us from other socialists, um, is that 
we need to build a movement. We need to move in that direction democratically. And that means we need to build a base. Mm -hmm. Um, and that it's literally impossible to jump over that step. So, uh, some people, even some people on the far, far left, you know, Mm -hmm. for example, Mm -hmm. aren't terrified about Trump because Mm -hmm. the idea that if conditions get so bad, people will be ready for a revolution. And that just, number one, um, I find that profoundly disturbing in, mm. in what it says about what you're willing to sacrifice with other people and other people's suffering. Uh, but number two, mm. it's just unreasonable and unlikely to happen. Um, mm-hmm. The only kind of change happens when organized people demand change and people do not become organized um, without work. So our job as socialists is to talk to people. Bernie demonstrated that there are millions of people in this country that are ready for that message. Mm-hmm. They're already experiencing the problems with capitalism. They know they're being screwed. Mm-hmm. Um, and they're looking for a way to change the system. And he really brought that to them. Okay. But... As we know, he didn't win at the convention. Right. But, though he came close. So. Right. He came closer than many people thought he would. And it was because he tapped... He electrified mm-hmm. people. He tapped into this anger and this fear and this desire that people had for change Mm -hmm. and he was speaking to them in a way that people like hillary clinton other capitalist democrats are not speaking to people (laughs) and um he i think is the only effective counter to the trump phenomenon (laughs) um, because trump also speaks part of the reason he's appealing to people is he speaks to that anger and fear as well um in a much more dangerous and Mm -hmm. racist way Mm -hmm. um But there is a lot of suffering in this country. Um, There's a lot of fear that some of the economic gains that particularly white upper middle class people have made in the recent decades is being eroded. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, And, you know, when you have Democrats up there saying, well, we've created this many jobs and America is already great, that completely erases the reality of a lot of people in this country. And Bernie Bernie knows that reality. Okay, so we need a lot of fact checking and... (laughs) Unfortunately, facts do not work in politics, usually, actually. It's, it's about uh, talking with people about their own experiences and mm-hmm. having one-on-one conversations and really building a base of people. Mm-hmm. Uh, and that doesn't happen overnight. Uh, and it, it's very rarely actually based on facts. I mean, facts are mm-hmm. an important part of the equation, but you, you really have to, um, okay. you have to meet people where they're at. People don't change their frame based on facts. Okay, well, let me ask you about the DSA itself. It's a, a national organization. And how, how is your organization organized? It, uh, um, it has a website. It has other sources of information. Mm-hmm. That, so our website is www.dsausa.org. Uh, that's one word, DSAUSA. Um, we are a member-funded, member-run activist organization we are not a political party Mm -hmm. uh and we believe you know everything that i've talked about today and we really believe Mm -hmm. that organized people are the only thing that will make change so we Mm -hmm. use direct action we use formal political work Mm -hmm. um we use solidarity with people trying to form unions we use a variety of tactics we educate the public um through our chapters that are in high schools colleges and communities across the country uh, we have about 50 chapters. We'd love to have one in every state mm-hmm. or more. Um, and we really do what Bernie did, which is we are openly socialist. Mm-hmm. We say we have an alternative, and mm-hmm. it's imminently possible. We just need to build a movement to take us there. And you're not going to scare me by saying that I'm some scary socialist boogeyman. Mm-hmm. I believe in what I'm doing, and I'm here to organize other people that believe that as well. Um, we're a member membership-based mm-hmm. organization, and uh, we are growing a lot. Bernie has really blown the lid off the capitalist kind of idea that there's no alternative. So people are looking to make change. So people who were supporting him in the campaign are, are now looking towards DSA, joining yeah, DSA? Yeah, we have hundreds of people joining every month. Uh, we have you know college students for Bernie and high schoolers for Bernie chapters that are turning into young democratic socialist chapters which is our youth group mm-hmm. um, we have people forming DSA chapters in their communities um, mm-hmm. and not only are a lot of people joining but they want to organize so it's really Bernie has changed the game so oh that's encouraging mm-hmm. and you're now traveling 
through New York State and Ohio and, and yeah. visiting some places where there are chapters. Yes, I'm going to Rochester, Buffalo, Cleveland, Columbus, and then going to Pittsburgh um, to visit DSA groups hmm. that are organizing. Um, and it's, it's really exciting. And then back a lot to, of energy. Then back to the New York office? Yeah, back to the office after that. And you're going to have a national convention? Yes, we have our national convention in August. We are a democratically run organization. So people elect delegate, the membership elect delegates, and mm -hmm. delegates attend the convention and elect our national board, uh, vote on our national priorities. Mm -hmm. uh, we also spend a lot of time doing mm -hmm. training, activism trainings, organizing mm -hmm. trainings, political education, mm -hmm. um, and a lot of social time. The most important part of being a socialist is putting the social in it. Um, so that's this August in Chicago. And do individual members vote or do chapters vote? How, how does it so work chapters, at the, the chapter, The delegates are apportioned by chapter based on how many members are in a chapter, and then the chapter mm -hmm. gets to elect that many delegates. They have to announce their election to the membership. Um, people that are not in your chapters can vote as at-large delegates mm -hmm. at the convention. Okay, so if anyone wants to find out more about a DSA and what it's doing, they can go to your website. Mm -hmm. They can also look at the website of Ithaca DSA, where one of the chapters is here in Ithaca. You can watch this very television program. Uh, there's also a radio program on WRFI, which is called The Inquiring Socialist, the, uh, with a new program every second Tuesday, if I'm not mistaken, WRFI, 88.1 on FM, Tuesday evenings at 6.30 p.m. Um, we also have you, Facebook yeah. and Twitter. Facebook and Twitter. Out there. And, and, and there's a link to them on the website yes. so people can find them. Yeah. A public Facebook page? or mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, so our, our listeners and viewers have... Really, no excuse for not finding more about, <laughs> finding out Precisely. more about DSA. <laughs> uh, this is Ithaca DSA Presents, and we've been talking with Maria Svart, the National Director of DSA, uh, now making a tour from New York City mm -hmm. to, through New York State and Ohio. I'm Wales Brown. This has been Ithaca DSA Presents. One, two, one, two, three.